The root of trigonometry is the same root as triangle. Triangles and trigonometry go hand in hand. So today we're going to answer the question, how are the ratios of the sides of triangles related. And we're going to set up this conversation about the ratio of sides with a look at a familiar concept of slope. If I were to take a grid here, and we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 1, 2, 3, 4 going up the side. And I'm going to draw a triangle that rises 1 and runs 2 from the origin. Rises 1, runs 2. We would say that the slope of that triangle is rise 1, run 2 of 1 half. Now I can continue on with this line, rising another 1 and running another 2 to give me a bigger triangle. Now it rises 2 and runs a total of 4. And so if I were to calculate the slope of this green triangle, I would say it rises 2, runs 4, which reduces down to 1 half. I could again rise another run and run another 2 and gives me a bigger triangle that this time rises 3 and runs now a total of 6. And so if I wanted the slope of this bigger triangle, I would say it rises 3 and one, runs 6, which reduces down to 1 half. And you can start to see the pattern. You can see if I rise another 1 and run another 2, it'll be a rise of 4 and a run total of 8. And so if I'm calculating the slope, it comes out to be a rise of 4, run of 8, which also reduces to 1 half. And what's really important here is I want to note for all of these triangles, the angle on the left, which I'm going to call theta, that angle is exactly the same angle as the triangle gets bigger and bigger. And as long as I keep that same angle going up, my slope is always going to be exactly the same. The slope is always going to be 1 half. That's the idea of the ratio of sides that we're looking at today, is we're going to see if, regardless of the size of the triangle, if that angle stays the same, the ratio will also always stay the same. So to set this up, let's just state that if the angle remains constant, so does the ratio of the sides. So for example, if I were to draw a triangle here and keep this angle, we'll call it theta, the same, the ratio of the sides will be exactly the same regardless of how big the triangle is as long as that angle doesn't change. Let's give each of these sides a name so we know what we're talking about. If I go across the triangle, we're going to call that the opposite side because it's opposite from the angle. The side right next to the angle, between the angle that we're talking about and the right angle, we're going to call the adjacent side. The one across from the right angle, we're going to call that the hypotenuse. There are three ratios of sides that we're going to talk about. The third one we've already talked about, actually. The third one is called the tangent of the angle theta. The tangent is the slope. It is the rise over the run. And in this triangle, it rises with the opposite side over the run, which is the adjacent side. So that tangent is always the same. It's opposite over adjacent. The other two that we talk about a lot are the sine of the angle and the cosine of the angle. The sine is calculated by taking the opposite side and dividing by the hypotenuse. 
The cosine is found by taking the adjacent side and dividing by the hypotenuse. And we need to know each of these three ratios really quick off the top of our head without much thinking. So you need to memorize these three ratios. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over the adjacent. And to kind of help remember, some people like this uh, rhyme of so ka toa. And that can help you remember the order. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. However you remember it is up to you. But you need to know each of those ratios so that you can solve triangles. And that's what we're going to do now. Solving right triangles. If I have this triangle here, and it's not drawn to scale, but let's say this angle is 20 degrees. We'll start with degrees. And let's say the side below it is 5. We want to solve for all the missing parts of this triangle, which means we need to know what the missing angle is. We need to know what this side over here on the left is. And we need to know what the side over here on the right is. Solving the triangle means finding all the missing angles and all the missing sides. To do that, we're first going to identify that the angle we know is 20 degrees. And the 5 is right next to it. The 5 is the adjacent side. The x is across from it. That's the opposite side. And the y is opposite the right angle. That's the hypotenuse side. So if we want to find the opposite side, the x, we know the adjacent. We're looking for the opposite. So I think, which of my trig ratios uses adjacent and opposite? The tangent is the one that uses the adjacent and the opposite. So I take the tangent of my angle, which is 20 degrees, and that's going to equal to tangent is opposite over the adjacent, x over 5. And I can solve this equation by multiplying both sides by 5. And x is equal to 5 times the tangent of a 20 degree angle. Pulling out my calculator, then I can use my calculator to find what the tangent of 20 is. One thing you'll want to check is first click the Mode button. And you will notice one of the lines lets you choose between radians and degrees. It's very important you have the correct one marked. We talked about 20 degree angles, so I need to make sure my degrees is highlighted. Hit Enter. And then when I hit second quit, it'll take me back home. But now the calculator will work in degrees. So I can type in 5. The tangent button is right above the parentheses in the 9. 20 degree angle. Close the parentheses. And when I hit Enter, I find out that missing side x is 1.8. Let's round it to 2. So x is equal to 1.82. 1.82. We found the x. To find the y, y is the hypotenuse. And I always like to go back to the side that was given to us, the adjacent side. So I think about my SOHCAHTOA and which one uses adjacent and hypotenuse. Adjacent and hypotenuse is the cosine. So the cosine of my angle, the cosine of 20 degrees, is the adjacent, 5 divided by the hypotenuse, which is y. And then I just need to solve this equation for the y. First, I'll get rid of the fraction by multiplying both sides by y. And I have y cosine 20 equals 5. And if I divide both sides by the cosine of 20, y is 5 divided by the cosine of 20. So I can go back to my calculator, which we already set to degree mode. 5 divided by the cosine of 20, close the parentheses, and I find out my y distance is 5.32. So the y distance is 
The only piece left to find then on this triangle is the angle. And what's nice is we know from our geometry days that all the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. We also have a 90 degree angle in this triangle that I can subtract off. And we're told there's a 20 degree angle. So if I subtract that off, theta, the missing angle, is equal to 70 degrees. And so now I've solved this triangle. I know all the sides and all the angles. The missing angle was 70, the missing hypotenuse 5.32, and the missing side the opposite side, 1.82. Let's solve another triangle. Let's take this triangle, again, not drawn to scale. And let's say we know the sides are 4 and 5. And we don't know any of the angles or the opposite side. So there's a missing side over here. I'll call it x. But there's also two missing angles this time. I'm just going to call the angles alpha and beta, two more Greek letters. Remember, Greek letters will generally represent angles. So alpha and beta are the two missing angles we're looking for. And we don't really know either of the angles right now. So let's first see if we can figure out what the alpha angle is. Let's do this color coded. So alpha is in green. If I'm talking about the alpha angle, the 5 is across from it. So 5 is the opposite side. 4 is the adjacent side between the angle and the right angle. And so I think which trig ratio uses opposite and adjacent? Well, that would be the tangent. The tangent of our angle is equal to the opposite 5 divided by the adjacent 4. We do have a way to solve for that angle alpha that's inside the tangent. We have to undo tangent. And what we'll call the undo tangent is the tangent inverse, which uses a little negative 1, like inverse functions from pre-calc 1. And we take the tangent inverse of the 5 fourths, and that will equal the angle alpha. And fortunately, our calculator has a tangent inverse button. First, we hit the second. And then we hit the tangent button, will give us tangent inverse. And we just have to type in the 5 fourths and hit Enter. And it tells us that angle alpha is 51.3 degrees. So that is our angle alpha, 51.3 degrees. We can now find beta pretty quick if we wanted to, because we know that there's 180 degrees in a triangle minus the 90 degrees in the right angle, minus the 51.3 that we just found gives us the remaining angle, which is going to be beta, in this case, 38.7 degrees. So beta is 38.7 degrees. We're still missing, however, the x, the hypotenuse side. To get that, we're going to use another one of our formulas from our geometry days. In geometry, we know the Pythagorean theorem is that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is the hypotenuse side. That's the side we're looking for. a will be 4 squared plus b is 5 squared equals c, which is x squared. 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. Add them together, and we get 41 is equal to the hypotenuse squared. And I can take the square root of both sides on my calculator. The square root of 41 is 6.40. So that tells us then the hypotenuse side is 6.40. 0, and we solve the triangle for all the missing sides and all the missing angles. Let's do one more that might be a little bit more involved, though. Let's say we've got this triangle and then a smaller triangle inside of it. We've got a 60 degree angle, a 30 degree angle. 
the height is 50. And what we're going to attempt to find is x, which is just the distance between the two angles. Well, we got a right angle there. To do this, we're going to break it up into two triangles. First, looking at the smaller triangle, I'm going to call this other distance y. And from the 60 degree angle, the 50 is the opposite side, and the y is the adjacent side. I know that tangent of my angle 60 is equal to the opposite 50 over the adjacent y. Solving, I'll multiply both sides by y to get rid of the fraction. y tangent of 60 is equal to 50. Divide both sides by the tangent of 60. And when we put that in our calculator, 50 divided by the tangent of 60, we find out that y distance is 28 point. Let's round that to 9. So y is 28.9. Now that we've solved that smaller triangle, I'm going to look at the bigger triangle, which doesn't just have the x distance. It also has that 28.9 added to it. But we can use the same idea that if I take the tangent of the 30 degree angle now, because I'm looking at the big triangle now. It's going to be the opposite, which is 50, divided by the adjacent, which is the entire length, not just the x, but the x plus 28.9. But this gives me an equation that we do know how to solve. We'll multiply both sides by x plus 28.9, x plus 28.9. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute the tangent through. So I have x tangent of 30 plus 28.9 tangent of 30 equals 50. Getting everything without an x out of the way, I'm going to subtract that 28.9 tangent of 30 from both sides. And then finally, divide both sides by the tangent of 30. And x, the piece I'm looking for, is 50 minus 28.9 tangent of 30 divided by the tangent of 30. Now, when I put this in my calculator, I have to be very careful. For one, every time I hit the tangent button, it's going to open a parentheses. I need to make sure I close the parentheses. In addition, because there's multiple things going on in the numerator, we're going to have to put parentheses around the numerator so they're all grouped together. So we've got parentheses 50 minus 28.9 tangent of 30. Close the parentheses on the tangent. Close the parentheses on the numerator. Divided by the tangent of 30. Close the parentheses on the tangent. And when I hit Enter, we find out that that missing side x that we're looking for is 57.7. We now have the length between the two angles is 57.7. And that's how we can solve triangles. Why are we so interested in solving right triangles? Well, the truth is there's lots of applications where we can use right triangles to find information that we want. First, to set this up, though, a little bit of vocabulary that you see often in application problems. One of them is the angle of elevation. That is the angle up from horizontal. Sometimes you'll hear the angle up from the horizon. So if the horizon is here, the angle of elevation, theta, is the angle up from that. That is the angle of elevation. We also have the angle of depression. 
That means the angle down from horizontal. So if I've got horizontal here, the angle of depression would be the theta, the angle down from the horizontal. Okay. So with that vocabulary in mind, let's say we have a 150-foot tall monument is viewed from a window. The angle of elevation to the top is 5 degrees. The angle of depression to the bottom is 10 degrees. How far away is the window? So the idea is you're in a building. Here's the window. And you're looking out the window at some monument. There's the beautiful monument. And from the window, you are looking up to the top of the monument. The angle of elevation there, that's the angle with the horizontal, is 5 degrees. And you're also looking down to the bottom of the monument. Again, this is not to scale. That angle is 10 degrees. What we end up with, then, is two right triangles, where the total height is 150 feet. It's a 150-foot tall monument. We want to know x, how far away we are. Well, let's split this 150 feet tall between these two pieces of height. So we'll name one of the pieces y. Let's name the top one y, actually. My monument disappeared. We'll name the top one y. The bottom one is what's left. So we have 150 originally, and we'll subtract off the y that's left. Notice from our angles that we're talking about, in both cases, we are looking for the adjacent side, which is x. And we have at least an expression about the opposite side. So we're really working with a tangent in both cases. Tangent has opposite and adjacent. So if I took the tangent of the 5 degree angle, that would be the opposite y over x. Or I could take the tangent of the 10 degree angle. That would be the opposite 150 minus y over x. Let's solve this first equation for y. If I multiply both sides by x, we get x tangent of 5 equals y, which means wherever I see a y, I could replace it with x tangent of 5. I'm going to do that in the other equation. So I now know that the tangent of 10 is equal to 150 minus x tangent of 5 divided by x. And if you remember back in our pre-calculus 1 class, we solved lots of linear equations for x. First, clearing the fraction, I can multiply both sides by x. So x tangent of 10 equals 150 minus x tangent of 5, because the x's divide out. We'll move everything with an x to the other side by adding the x tangent of 5 to both sides equals 150. Now we can factor out the x, leaving behind the tangent of 10 
plus the tangent of 5 is equal to 150. And we finally solve for x by dividing x is equal to 150 divided by the tangent of 10 plus the tangent of 5. Remember, x is that distance we were away from the monument in our window. That's that distance we're trying to find. As I type this in my calculator, I'm going to be careful because every time I hit tangent, it'll open a parentheses. I need to remember to close both those parentheses. In addition, because there's lots of stuff going on in the denominator, we need to make sure that denominator is in parentheses. So on my calculator, we have 150 divided by, open a parentheses for the denominator, tangent of 10, close the parentheses on tangent, plus the tangent of 5, close the parentheses on tangent, close the parentheses on the denominator, and we find out that that distance from the monument is 568 point, let's call it 6 feet. So today, we're solving right triangles. You're using one of these three ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent, to find missing pieces. And your calculator will be helpful. Just make sure it's in degree mode as you're calculating those. So good luck on the homework assignment. Let me know if you have any questions.